Welcome to Waters World. I'm Jesse Waters. James Comey and Hillary Clinton, the perfect pair. That's the subject of tonight's Waters Words. Donald Trump's rise through real estate, reality TV, and politics has left a lot of people in the dust. The two most prominent opponents Trump has vanquished, James Comey and Hillary Clinton, handled their losses in the exact same way and for the exact same reasons. We'll break it down in a second. But here's the real reason this should matter to you. Losing to Donald Trump has become a cottage industry in America. Certain individuals are now trafficking in their defeats for financial, psychological, and reputational reasons. We want you to be able to identify these people and their true motivations before drinking their Kool-Aid. So let's begin. Comey and Hillary, fired and defeated by Trump, both write books collecting multi-million dollar advances and a piece of the action on the sales side. Comey and Hillary both go on national mainstream media tours, free book promotion, facilitated by friendly questions and largely ignoring territory where their narratives are challenged. A critical component to the media blitz is reputation rehab, getting their story out there. Now, their stories are the same. They're not really the losers. They're victims. Victims of unethical Trump who cheated them out of their rightful titles. Both Comey and Hillary share in the same delusion. They're incapable of seeing the other side's viewpoint and unable to admit their own faults. It's too painful for them. Comey still can't see why Trump fired him because the president didn't trust him and thought he was incompetent. And Hillary still can't see why she lost because Trump was a better campaigner and voters disliked her. And because they're so self-righteous, they make excuses. The Russians, obstruction, collusion, sexism, the list goes on and on. The investigation that they conducted ended in July. It was over and then it was reignited. Comey was more than happy to talk about my emails. You had Citizens United come to its full fruition. If you look at Facebook, uh, the vast majority of the news, news items posted were fake. The constant rewriting of history is the result of obsession, obsession with Donald Trump. Psychologically, the inability to reconcile their loss with the truth. This is why Comey wrote creepy passages about Trump's skin, hair, and hands, and why Hillary won't exit the stage gracefully. In fact, Comey and Hillary truly believe Trump is obsessed with them. It's unbelievable. He's tweeted at me probably 50 times. I've been gone for a year. I'm like a breakup he can't get over. The last thing that ties Comey and Hillary together, potential criminal acts. House Republicans have just issued criminal referrals for both of them to the Attorney General's office, and we'll discuss that later tonight. But here's the bottom line. There is a mountain of evidence Comey and Hillary committed crimes, but no evidence so far of Trump committing any. So now you know how to spot the anti-Trump hustlers. Look for the pattern, profit, pain, and PR. Here to respond, former House, White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci. We're going to get to the Kellyanne Conway segment next because we want to talk about the Comey memos. But now I want to talk about the collapse of James Comey. But before that, what do you think of that brilliant commentary? Well, it was brilliant, but I almost thought you needed like a drug on the table here that you were going to recommend to people that take it after they've been vanquished by uh, uh, the president. But yeah, I think Chardonnay is what Hillary's taking. I, the only thing you left out, in my humble opinion, is that uh, uh, neither of them like people. The right. president likes people. Uh, at the end of the day, there's a gregarious nature to his personality when he's campaigning. These guys like to closet themselves off. And so I think true. What, what ends up happening is, is that even if you like them, the more time you spend with them, you end up liking them less. And so Both socially awkward individuals. So that, that's the big issue there. Uh, and the last piece is typically when you don't like people, you think you're superior to people. Mm -hmm. uh, the president doesn't think he's superior to anybody. All the president's trying to do is be a patriotic American and make very smart decisions on behalf of all the American people. And you don't think These you're guys, a superior person. You actually not, think you're an inferior person to most people. Yeah, that's 100 percent correct. Very humble. Yeah, yeah, because I'm a Roman Catholic, and so you you learn that when you when you go to Catholic. Did you go to catechism? No, I did not. Yeah, I went to well, Quaker you, school. You see, if you had gone to catechism, your whole life would have been different. Okay, <laughs> it would have been Waters Universe as opposed to just Waters. That's world, right. right. I need a little you more have, ego have, in my. You'd have the whole galaxy, <laughs> yes. But, um, but, but at the end of the day, that's the problem. And so the president is uh, probably snickering at the whole thing. Uh, Director Comey thinks that it's a bad breaker for the president. He, he could care less. He, yeah. you know, he's hitting uh, him because he doesn't like to be hit. 
Uh, and he comes up with these nicknames, and I, I'm sure there'll be therapy as a result of those nicknames. Shady James. That was uh, yeah, one slime, of my favorites. The slime ball one was a little rough. The slime ball, that was pretty rough. Yeah. So let's listen to James Comey in his own words with George Stephanopoulos talking about the president. I don't know whether the, the current president of the United States was with prostitutes peeing on each other in Moscow in 2013. It's possible, but I don't know. To the head of the FBI, doesn't know and it's possible. It's totally impossible. Uh, and by the way, the president said something really funny at his press conference in January 2017 before he was inaugurated. He says, I'm a germaphobe. No one's <laughs> peeing on me. I don't think he's anywhere near urination. It's just a ridiculous thing to distract from the agenda yeah. and to distract from the really good policies that have been implemented. And so that's what they got to do. I mean, it's a politics of distraction, scandals incorporated and all this stuff. I'm a little upset with the with the director, though, because he, he came across when he was in New York as a straight up guy yeah. uh, and the power went to his head. And now he's actually equivocating in a way that even he doesn't understand. At one point, he said on the BBC a couple of nights ago that he wouldn't give the president if he was the director, he wouldn't give the president certain intelligence information. Uh, but you just wrote a 350 page book about sanctimony and loyalty yeah. and process and rule of law. But now you're above the law and making decisions that would abrogate authority from the commander in chief. This is nonsensical stuff. Uh, my recommendation to him is get off the air, take a chill, and uh, develop a little bit of self-awareness about the problems you yourself have, because guess what? We all have problems. Yeah, you're, you're talking to me. You and me have I, like I, phone I, books of problems, yeah. but other people have like thin sh that, sheets of paper That's problems. right. This is also George Stephanopoulos and James Comey. This did not make air, but we have the transcript, and there's probably a reason why this doesn't make air on ABC News Sunday. Listen to this. Sepulnopoulos says, what about the rest of the Steele dossier? Has it checked out? Is it a credible document? And James Comey says, the answer is, I don't know. This is huge, Anthony, and this is why, because you're only allowed to present credible, substantiated documents to a FISA judge when you're looking to get a warrant on another American. Mm -hmm. If the FBI director knows or doesn't know about the credibility of a document, and he's proffering that to a FISA judge, that's perpetrating fraud on a FISA court judge. And, and moreover, we learned that some of the documents, the memos that he turned over, actually had confidential information in them, the ones that he leaked. Yes. And so that could be a problem for So, the, yeah, he's know, looking you know, at uh, some serious so, consequences there so, as well. So that's another reason to get off the air. Um, well, and, he's got to sell books. He's got, he's got to sell books. I think, I think he's going to peter out on the books. Have you read you the book? So. You think no, so. We've read excerpts. Yeah. No, I read the book last weekend. I mean, listen, there's a lot, and I want to be fair to him. Uh, I love his upbringing. I love a lot of things that he says about the FBI, but I think he's got the whole thing wrong with the sanctimony. Uh, and just as another example of that, where you're, you're, you're splitting things in a way that is not fair to the president, and it's a lot of partisanship in there. Or if it's not partisanship, I'll go one step further and say it's the politics of personal dislike. Yes. You don't like the person, and so now you're going to curve the rules to affect and hurt the person. It's unfair. Yep. Uh, he did not like the president. Uh, McCabe, his number two, didn't like the president. We and know Clapper the and Brennan didn't like the president. Right. Didn't think the president was going to win. Uh, obviously a very biased individual. I don't know how he can be a witness in any sort of Mueller case. I think he's see, totally I mean, discredited the great, himself. The great thing about Waters World, you and I are both very biased, but at least we're right up front with the bias. That's true. And uh, are you growing your hair out? It looks very coiffed. No, no, no. I'm using your texture spray. I went in there <laughs> and I said, Jesse, he's got less hair than me. That's proprietary. But he, but he looks like he has more hair than me on stage. And so I <laughs> put a little of that texture spray in. It looks like an Italian chia pet now. <laughs> okay. Looking, very happy with it. Looking good. Thanks, Anthony. All right. Here with more on the Comey fallout, actor Dean Cain. Okay. Dean, I want to show you a... Uh, I know you like the comment I, want I made. Some of that hairspray. I know. I want the hairspray. I know. Stuff. You know what? You actually might have better hair than Anthony and myself. <laughs> uh, I hate to say that. Uh, Anthony's still here. Anthony, you can leave now. No, I'm looking at Dean's That's hair. Gonna, you can. You can leave. We're, <laughs> we're done me talking a, with you. Text me a picture of that hairspray <laughs> that you're using, Dean. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. And send that yes, over sir. here. I want. I want a shipment. <laughs> done. Um, I wasn't going to bring this up with you because I never got around to it with Anthony because he was talking too much. But the Democratic Party has filed a lawsuit, is suing Russia, Donald Trump, the campaign, Kushner, Donald Trump Jr., WikiLeaks. They're suing everybody because I guess they're just sore losers and they can't accept the defeat. What do you think about that lawsuit? 
I, I'm thinking that's not going to win. I yeah. think they're not going to get there. But you know what it does? It just keeps muddying the water, keeps keeping it out there, keeps that same narrative going, and that's yep. what they want to do. It's just they're just going to keep it going, and we're going to have to hear about it and listen to it and muckrake. And, you know, anytime that, that Comey can get out there and say, you know, things like, I can't verify that there was peeing and this, they just keep saying those same things. And after a while, you start to believe it as fact. Yeah, it's repetition and it works on half the public. And it looks like the Mueller investigation is not really going the way the Democrats want it to go. So they're throwing this frivolous lawsuit out there. So James Comey was asked about Hillary destroying evidence. Remember, they smashed the Blackberries with hammers. They bleached all of their servers. Listen to James Comey's response on radio. Here it is. Why wouldn't smashing of cell phones and the destruction of thousands of emails during an investigation clearly be obstruction of justice? Now, that's a great question. That's the first time I've been asked that. And, and the, the answer is it would depend upon what the intent of the people doing it was. Lots of people smash their cell phones so they're not resold on the secondary market and your personal stuff ends up in somebody else's hands. But if you smash your cell phone knowing that investigators want it and that they've cut a subpoena for it, for example, that is a different thing and can be obstruction of justice. <laughs> Okay, lots of people smash their cell phones. Anthony's still here, by the way. He's he's sitting here. He's he's laughing. I'm, I'm hoping to get more air time. I, yeah. Keep going. I, okay, you've never smashed your cell phone. Have you ever smashed your cell phone, Dean? No, never. Not one time. I mean, not by you know by accident. Yeah, you sure, dropped it but after a few purpose. drinks, right? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 of course, right. it takes me a, a number to get there. Right. But listen, I mean, uh, I I take my phone and I clear it. And then I resell it because, I, you know, you want some money back on that. Not lots of people smash their cell phones because they want to hide their personal information. You can get rid of that. It's clear what happened there. Everybody knows what happened. They smashed their cell phones to get rid of any evidence. It's so blatant. It's unreal. And the bleach bit and things like that, I mean, it, it's, it's so obvious. It's just embarrassing. It's like... Uh, could you imagine... You, you would, it, would, it doesn't pass muster. Could you imagine if, um, you know, there were some subpoenas out with Michael Cohen or Donald Trump, and we found out that Donald Trump or Michael Cohen or Don Jr. had literally taken hammers and smashed their Blackberries <laughs> and then bleached their servers on their computer networks. What do you think the mainstream media would have said if that had happened but on the other side? Armageddon, the end of the world as we know it. It would have been insanity. Volcanoes would have erupted. It would have been insane. Uh, it, and this, and uh, you know, this, it, this, the scales of justice are supposed to be equal. Well, they're clearly not. There's there are rules for one group, and there are, are rules for the rest of us. And those guys, you know, someone doesn't have their thumb on the scale of justice. There are entire people standing on the scale <laughs> and, and making it complete. It's it's ridiculous. I mean, it's literally a joke. Yeah. So speaking of ridiculous. And and a joke here again is James Comey trying to have it both ways when it comes to telling the truth. Listen to what he said to George Stephanopoulos about the president lying. Are you thinking President Trump's a liar? Yes. I had obviously concerns about that earlier, having watched him on the campaign, that he is someone for whom the truth is not a high value. Okay, so this is just days later. He goes on The View and says this about lying. Good people lie. I lay out in the book, I think I'm a good person, where I've lied. Okay, so when the president lies, he's an evil man, and when anybody else lies, they can be good people. Of course. Those are the scales, those are the scales of justice. Stand on this side, and that's, it's, 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 it's ridiculous. The longer this book tour continues for James Comey, the worse he looks. And, and the more he says, I'm surprised that he's out there saying so much. He's like one of those criminals that think they're so much smarter than the investigators, and they keep talking and they keep talking. He's starting to dig big holes. You're right. That's a great point. All right, Dean, I got to run. Uh, Anthony's got to get out of here. We're keeping him. So we're going to go to I'm, break. I'm back here smashing my cell phone, Dean. <laughs> I hope you didn't hear it. <laughs> yeah, try to keep it down, all right? All right. The Comey memos Deal. did the former FBI director sign his own prison sentence. The White House with reaction up next. <laughs>